Okay, micro geniuses, this is the last portion of lab 45 on culturing from skin. Um, we are going to today look at three different colonies and then uh, that will help you fill out your table on page 365. The source of inoculum is the uh, bridge of my nose, okay? And so the first thing that we're going to do is just look at three different colonies. And for colony description and pigment, colony description, you can just say, you know, small circular colony or whatever, uh, based on what you see. And then pigment is not the pigment of the medium, it's the pigment of the colony itself. Here is the Petri dish. I'm try to get this without glare. Okay, the colonies are pretty translucent. And so rather than saying that we need to pick three colonies from these, I'll direct you over here. You can see three colonies there. One that is very close to the edge of the Petri dish, and then two over there. So I'm going to pick those as my colonies. And you can see it's difficult to tell the color, but it is, they're sort of off-white. They're not yellow in color. They're off-white. Take this off so you can maybe see it a little bit better. Put my finger behind the colonies. Okay, they're small circular colonies. They're off-white. And as you can tell, the medium is still completely pink. There was no mannitol fermentation in mannitol salt agar. If you get mannitol fermentation, then the media actually turns yellow. Okay, so for mannitol fermentation for each of these three colonies, that would be negative. Okay, so I did not culture Staphylococcus aureus from my skin, which is surprising because I've known to carry staph, so uh, I'm really surprised that it wasn't on my nose. So I just had a really clean nose that day. So anyhow, um, no mannitol fermentation, no Staphylococcus aureus. Next, we're going to do uh, isolate one of the colonies, and I'll do that with a sterile loop, and then we'll do the catalase test. So now I have a small amount of bacteria on the slide. You can barely see that. And then I've got my peroxide. So, and if my peroxide bubbles, then it's catalase positive, meaning there's catalase enzyme in the bacteria. Okay, so I get my loop or my uh, pipette out. I'll just put a few drops of peroxide. the bacteria on the slide. Okay. Let's see if I can hold this up here so you can see it. And I don't think you can really see that. I'm gonna to try to put it down maybe a little ways, but it did bubble. Might be able to see a few bubbles there. It did bubble, so it is catalase positive. Okay, so under my colony description, under my colony description, I can just say put plus on the catalase reaction. And I'll put that slide aside, and then next, I'm going to set up a gram stain. Now, seeing as you guys did so many gram stains this semester, I'm not going to set this up on camera. Uh, we'll just go ahead and. Um, what I'll do is I'll tell you the results and then I will take pictures of the results with my phone and I'll post those on Moodle so you can take a look at those results as well. Actually, maybe I'll just take a picture with my phone and I can just show it on this video and you can see if it's gram positive or gram negative. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Let me pause the video and I'll be back with the gram stain. Okay, while well, I'm waiting for my slide to dry, which is here, Okay, and I'm waiting for that to dry. I'll go ahead and do critical thinking and clinical applications for this lab. Now, one of the things you'll notice about this lab is that 
there is a third period to it, but we did not do the third period. We're just doing um, uh, period one, the inoculation, period two, the initial results. So where it says on the bottom of page 365, second mannitol plate, salt plate, uh, coagulation test, clumping, positive or negative, you can cross that out, okay? And then on page 366, the table that has the fermentation test that says glucose, triolose, and xylose, you can cross that table out, okay? And what you'll identify, since this was non-pathogenic, chances are this is a Staphylococcus epidermidis, which is grow, really grows easily on mannitol salt auger, grows easily on the skin, uh, on the skin should be gram positive, although we're gonna confirm that in just a minute. And so if you said that you were going to culture a pathogen from your skin, uh, from my skin, then you were wrong because I have clean skin and we cultured probably Staphylococcus epidermidis, which is not a pathogen. Okay, then under critical thinking, number one says, what is coagulase? Coagulase is an enzyme that breaks down blood clots. And um, you would, if you were uh, bacteria and you were invading somebody's uh, circulatory system, it would be beneficial to break down blood clots because that would gain entry into the capillaries and the veins and the arteries. So the reason that's related to pathogenicity is that can cause the bacterial disease to spread. Okay. And number two, assume that you isolated Staphylococcus aureus from your skin. How would you determine whether it was penicillin resistant? Well, we just did this on lab uh, 25. You just do a Kirby-Bauer test and see if it's developed a resistance to penicillin. Just use an impregnated disc with penicillin and then see if you have the proper size of zone of inhibition. Okay, and then for clinical application, we have an eight-year-old boy who went to the pediatrician complaining of, of a pain in his right hip. He had no previous injury to the hip or leg. His temperature was 38 degrees Celsius. A bone scan revealed damage to the head of the femur. Bacterial cultures in the blood and fluid from the hip joint were positive for gram positive, catalase positive, coagulase positive, caucus that ferments mannitol. So you wanna to go to appendix H. So we have a gram positive caucus. Okay. So it looks like page 480. Yes, 480 will give you the correct answer. So go ahead and look at appendix H, uh, 480, uh, trace down the lines for gram positive, catalase positive, coagulase positive, and it does ferment mannitol and you'll get the right answer. Okay, so with that, now I think we're ready to heat fix. So I'll show you just to prove that I did the gram saying I will heat fix the slide, one, two, I can turn my button off. Okay. Now I'm just going to do it on my own. You guys know how to do gram stains. So I'll be back. Okay. So I did the gram stain. And um, here is the result. Don't know if you can see that very well. I try to get this out of the glare here for you. But you can see. A lot of glare. Get that back. But you can see, hopefully, some purple caucus there. So the color is purple, so it's gram positive. The shape is caucus, and the arrangement is in clusters. So with that, then you should have enough information to do lab 45. So what we'll do is uh, we'll have lab 45 due on Tuesday when you do the final exam. Just make sure that you turn in lab 45 sometime before 5 p.m. Um, 
You also have Lab 25, which is due today, Friday, the 17th of April. And if you have any questions while you're studying for the final exam or any questions on the lab, just shoot me an email. We can set up a Zoom call early next week. Have a good weekend.